Hey there, I'm really happy to be with you here tonight. And Adobe has invited two very talented editors to come and speak with us about their work. So please welcome Kyle Ryder and Ernie Gilbert. Hi. 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 So Kyle is the lead editor, and Ernie is the assistant editor on the Smokin' Hot series Atlanta. So these guys are half the editing team? That's right. Yeah, we have another editor and another assist. Another okay. editor and another assist, but you both have been on both seasons. That's right. And you've just gotten a third season is going to be happening soon. Ooh, yeah, we don't know when. Don't know when, but you guys are... Um, basically doing this incredible work that I love. I think a lot of us have seen this series. It's really fresh, it's really special, and I think that a lot of what's really cool about it is the sound work, the sound design. It makes it really unique, and I think we'd like to talk with you a little bit about the creative freedom you have on that level. Sure. I think it's worth mentioning that um, the, the show doesn't really have much score to it. We don't have a composer. Uh, there, there is a minor exception, but uh, most of the show, uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's very much about texture and mood, and there aren't a lot of big set pieces. It's not very fast paced, and so it's on us to really uh, beef up the sound, and the music that is in the show is all diegetic, so it sort of sounds as though it's coming from a car or through a wall, and that's something that we spend a lot of time in the offline edit doing because we want it to sound right because that's a really important component to the show. Yeah, so um, I, I've noticed that most of the episodes, all of the audio is happening on screen. So if you right. hear music, it's coming through someone's earbuds or their or their car, their truck. That's or, right. That's right. And, and we should say we we cut the show in Adobe Premiere Pro, and so we have a lot of flexibility with making it sound good in our offline and we that's why we spend a lot of time doing it we don't we don't wait for mixers to get it to make it sound right we you we do, do it yourself it. that's right i mean you are so lucky to be able to have that creative freedom it sounds like your team really supports you yeah. helping craft that feel for the show that's right donald glover who created the show and hero mirai who directs a majority of them they really like being surprised and so that really gives us the freedom when they're shooting in Atlanta, we're cutting in Los Angeles, we can really try a lot of different stuff and we can really take some big swings because they like being caught off guard. And it doesn't always work, but I, I never feel as though I'm going to do something that is going to put them off, you know, because they like, oh, wow, oh yeah, okay. They're open, yeah, they yeah. want to hear it. Absolutely. Yeah. And how do you two collaborate together? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he, does, he does all the stuff that I don't know how to do because I'm kind of a nitwit when it comes to... Uh, the technical stuff. Yeah. I, I think we spend, that's half true, right? we, we spend a lot of time just with, um, talking about like maybe pulling music or sound effects, things that, he, you know, Kyle might need in the edit, me pulling together some options. We do a lot. We do all of our VFX in house. So, you know, there's a lot of sort of internal turnovers that right. we're doing to get things prepped. Well, also, Ernie, you, you're humble, but, you know, he cut Childish Gambino's This Is America, and clearly you understand. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this guy, yeah. yeah. You got to do guy give you a standing up. <laughs> clearly you understand what your directors and producers are looking for, or rather listening for in, in right. sound. Right, I mean, t talking about sound specifically, we try to do all of those creative um, explorations in the offline uh, right. to build out the sound, to let it be a, a character on the show so that when we get into mix, because we're a more low budget cable show. We have no money. Um, <laughs> That's a nice way. When we get into mix, we want to already kind of have flushed out what these ideas are. Right. And, and Premiere and the tools that we have at, you know, at our office, let us try those things, explore those things, and then we, we know where we're going, yeah. and the mixers can kind of just take right. it to the final. And they really follow the blueprint you create for absolutely. them in the end. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of what we do winds up in, you know, obviously they're doing their due diligence with normalizing and mixing and making it sound correctly, but a lot of what we do in the offline winds up in the episode. You are so lucky. Should we, yeah, should we show true. the clip? Yeah, we have stuff to show. Yeah, yeah, so let's go yeah. ahead and show a couple clips. So you've brought something that really uh, shows the execution of the, the diagenic type of yes, audio. Yes, that's right. Okay, yeah. so let's take a look. Oh, yeah, man, like I was saying, though, yeah. Yeah, a lot of us are from the South. I'm, like, a really big UGK fan. Pimp C, like, one of the last real prophets, man. That was, like, the, the crime mob, D. Pharrell, Maceo days. Yeah, those were classic. 
Yeah. So you're in the snap music. <laughs> Man, you remember that song, um, The Bubble Gum? Yeah, that was my shit. Laffy Taffy. <laughs> yeah. My cousin used to always play that shit. Hmm. Matter of fact, hold on. I gotta go give these pledges a mud bath. Uh, you don't need anything from the fridge. You good, man. Yeah, you good. Thank you. All right. Yeah, cool, man. Move out! That was amazing. Yeah, I, I, we can't follow that. I don't know, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, no. So that that scene is a good example of uh, a number of things. One, uh, it's very music heavy. That that song was scripted. Some of it's scripted. A lot of it we're choosing in the edit. That one specifically was scripted. Um, we also we really go out of our way to make music sound bad mm -hmm. on the show, kind of much to the dismay of our mixers. Where because so much of the music is coming from phones, laptops, cars, it's got to sound bad. It's so gotta, the, the idea there was like he's playing off his phone to like we the Bluetooth a, of some... Right, so we're in the basement of a frat house. They probably have some sort of PA system that's been totally abused and it sounds horrible, right? So we're in the mix going like, no, no, that sounds... That sounds that too sounds, good. Yeah, no, no, it's got to sound worse. So that's a lot of what we do. And you can also hear um, in, the, in the background, we have kind of... Uh, a party that's playing upstairs. I, I could hear a little bit. Yeah, of that. and if and, and if you watch that uh, episode further in that scene, once all of the guys leave and it's just Ern and his cousin Alfred there on the couch, they have sort of a very heart to heart kind of like breakup sort of argument, and the party is continuing throughout. And we sort of use that background sound as score. So we're sort of, we have peaks and valleys. It's very, very subtle. It's things that probably people wouldn't notice. But because we don't have score, we sort of use those elements as score. And weave that in, That's yeah. right. So that's, that's an example of Yeah, of I've that. noticed that. And um, we'll speak about how are you creating this, you know, funky, it's supposed to not be clean sound. Are you using uh, the essential sound panel? That's right. Yeah, we do that a lot. Um, we, you know, it's just, it's simple things like futzing with distortion, room reverb, that sort of thing. I really like doing the, uh, I really like being able to keyframe audio effects mm -hmm. and I like, and I can do it without rendering, you know, so, so a lot of it is just sort so of. So you're really going there. I mean, you're keyframing. Oh, yeah. You're... Yeah. And, it, well, and, the, and the tools too, they help us to do things very quickly, but also very complexly. We're able to, we're able to hit playback ramp up reverb as it's playing back. Oh, this is what it sounds like with more reverb, dial mm -hmm. it back. Mm -hmm. So we can dial those things in. And then when we're sitting or when you're sitting with Hero or Donald, you can, you know, be on top of levels and-, and That's right. Right. Yeah, I actually, when I, a lot of times when Hero and Donald are in the room and we're playing back something, I can turn uh, things up and down without interrupting the playback. Which I mean, I so like, they're in the room with time. you and you're kind of mixing, well, yeah, mixing sort of, this Yeah, instead of writing go. down, this is too loud, that was too quiet, I can right, do it on, the fly, it on the fly and it saves me so much time later. Yeah. Uh, so that's a good tool for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just, you know, b because there's not a lot of rendering and we can, it's a lot of trial, trial and error, honestly. And, and for the songs that are coming through that are playing, do you get to choose those? Do you have any influence or do you, do yeah, they, oh, they, quite they a tell bit. you yeah. what they want? Yeah, I, this thing, things that are like sort of modern, like trap music, hip hop, uh, Donald and his brother Steven are sort of the go-to for that. But um, I worked at a record store for a really long time. So I have a pretty good working knowledge of like old soul and jazz and things like that. So I bring a lot of that to it and, and they love it. And they know? love they, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We also have, we have great um, music supervisors who are, who go to Atlanta and talk to young unsigned kids and try and get their music in the show as well. So it's really, it's a very democratic process. So, I mean, this music is a really important component, even though you're not using it as score. 
That's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we do, we do, we have, we, we sort of cheat a little bit. We have montages and things like that, that we'll use it, but we don't, um, yeah, we don't, th this is, this is all music that's, that's in the world and being able to worldize the music in our cuts. Yeah. I think that's what makes it so unique and special. I mean, that, that combination of, of, well, introducing us to that in my opinion it, it adds a way. layer of authenticity it right is. yeah that's right. a great because you're for it. it's, it's more documentary you're more in that yeah, moment right rather than kind of a montage at the end of an episode to a coldplay song or something right. you know right, right, right. now you do have no some episodes coldplay. where i've heard music um really interesting music that i think you mentioned were from some local la artists did you we had we have one there is one episode uh from this past season it was episode 205 uh the whole episode is alfred uh trying to get a haircut from a barber and and bibby, the, bibby is the barber's name and the whole episode is just the two of them. There's no B story. We're not cutting away to anything. And it was kind of a difficult one to put together for that reason. So I did something that we've never done before. I started scoring it with jazz. I started scoring it with old like nice. hard bop and stuff like that because it really felt it, it fit the character of Bibby, who's very frenetic and crazy. And it sort of helped with the pace of the whole thing. And uh, when Donald saw it, he said, oh, this is a great idea. Yes, scoring it. I think the jazz thing has sort of been done, maybe. So this is where, this is where it helps to have Donald as your showrunner. He, he texted um, Thundercat and Flying Lotus, who are two L.A. musicians who are sort of <laughs> nice. like experimental yeah. hip-hop. Thundercat's like, like an amazing bass yeah, player. So he like, <laughs> yeah, he was like, hey, can you, can, you score this can you score this episode? And they were like, yeah, sure. And they came in the next day and watched it. And then a week later, we had a score. And it was like, oh, OK. I guess it's that easy when you're Donald Glover. You just have, <laughs> you just have, you can just text like so you, geniuses. Can we see that clip? Oh yeah, we have yeah, that we, clip. Yeah we, can, yeah, we can show that. Yeah, let's do that. Hey, you don't think she called police, do you? I'm still on probation, nigga, so I hope the fuck not. No, I shouldn't go. We are. It's all good. Do I even have to say it, baby? We should probably just head. probably head back to the shop, right? Probably head on right? back to the shop. Yeah, That's okay. Right. I'm going to take you right on back. Get you cut up real quick. I got you, big boy. Shit. Man, baby. Fuck you. Oh, yeah, that one don't work good. So that's that's yeah. atypical, but that's that's another example. Yeah, so that you're saying that is atypical. That's, that's not... the only episode that we've ever put oh, only score one. in, like like actual composed score. But I think you were, that was a great choice that you made because it really helped it move along. I mean, there was so much, yeah. um, like, like we'd, we'd heard that conversation between them. I love that episode actually. Okay. Well, I'm, well, I'm lucky enough to work on a show where I can make that choice if I want to and they go with it. So yeah. that's the dream. Yeah. You guys both do such creative work and I'm so inspired by your editing and oh, I thanks. really appreciate thanks. you coming here tonight. Oh, thanks for having us. Sharing this, this with yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. I love talking about the show, so. That's great. Thanks. And thank you both. Yeah, okay. So Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys.